Hey everyone, it's me, and today, once again, we are continuing in this story arc, but this is the part one of that story arc. Anyway, you, you know how this works. It's, it's just how we have to run through things, break it into pieces. And this is like part three of part one. You, you know. Anyway, so the sensorites, not good, not great, but also have proven that they're not at least directly capable of violence. So we have that working in our favor. Let's hope we can continue to, you know, get past all this nonsense and maybe we can get Susan back and yeah, definitely get the lock and the opening mechanism to the TARDIS back. That's kind of crazy that they were able to just extract that so easily, especially since, you know, the TARDIS is from a different time and place. It just seems interesting that they were able to uh, extract it so easily, but it's what it is. We know that they're good at locks. So without further ado, let's get to more classic Doctor Who. I'm gonna watch with you just like I always do. You mustn't move, any of you. Grandfather, it was the only way. They knew I'd agree. Agree to what? To go down with them to their planet. Otherwise, we'll all be killed. Yeah. Uh, run and stop them. Don't just let this happen. So stupid. Susan mustn't go with them. There can't be air outside the spaceship. You can't stop them. We must. Come with me, Barbara. Don't. They'll only harm her or kill her if you try and interfere. And if we do nothing, she'll die. Indeed. Do you intend to try out the doctor's theory that they can't see in the dark? Why not? It's all we have. Go oh, back. Don't interfere, please. We want to talk to you. We have no wish to harm you in any way. I said talk, not fight. Intruders from other planets always say they wish to talk, but all they mean to do is destroy. Ian, please let me go with them. Because I can use telepathy, they trust me. You're not going with them, Susan. And that's final. Why? It's suspicion that's making them enemies. You don't understand the sensorites. Do you think I don't understand? Trust is a two-sided affair. Indeed. Putting us all in danger. If you go with them, they will have all the advantage. But they only want to talk Indeed. to me. I'm sorry, Susan, but I don't believe you have the ability to represent us. That's all. Stop treating me like a child. You will do as you're told, Susan. Come here. Fair. I'm sorry, Grandfather. I can't do it. This instant. I didn't think that they were actually going to stop her. Done them with the hand ray. Now, Chesterton. You were absolutely right, Doctor. There, help us in the dark. Susan. This is like the time they stopped that tart. The they stopped the uh, the Dalek with the current and everything. Help us. Put on the light, Chesterton. You could have been left here in the darkness. We have power over you, but we don't intend to use it. It's only in our defense. What do you want? Nothing that isn't ours. You stole the lock from our ship. You also threatened to take us prisoner. Get it back! We must ask for new orders. Watch that. Speak up. I must refer this matter to the sense sphere. Well, you must be patient. Oh, I won't be put up in a A lot of patience being asked here. Put the light out again. All right, I will. Dictated to by petty thieves and my own grandchild. <laughs> what is all this, setting yourself against me, hmm? I didn't, Grandfather. Oh, I know you thought you were doing your best, child, in the circumstances, but I think I'm a better judge of that. Well, I have opinions, too. My dear girl, the one purpose in growing old is to accumulate knowledge and wisdom and to help other people. So I'm to be treated like a silly little child? If you behave like one, yes. Oh, look, Grandfather, I understand the sensorites. They're timid little people. Because their minds and mine can communicate sometimes, they trust me. Yes, and I assure you, we shall make good use of that fact, but not without discussion. You will not make decisions on your own accord. Now, do you understand? Is that quite clear? Well, is it? Look, I'm not saying I'm as clever as you or anything. Of course I'm not. But I won't be pushed aside. I'm not a child anymore, Grandfather. I'm not. Oh, Susan, Susan. Why do you make her unhappy? We can read the misery in her mind. Yes, and it's a good thing you can't read the anger in mine. 
In all the years my granddaughter and I have been traveling, we have never had an argument. And now you have got one. All right, Grandfather. I'll do as you tell me. Good, good. Now let's work together and see if we can't get the lock of the TARDIS back. Hmm? Indeed. We have orders from the first elder. Is he your ruler? Yes. He says we are to listen to you and to transmit your words to him. Very well. I'd like to talk to him face to face. I want to arrange the release of this spaceship. Tell him we're not pirates or plunderers. There's only one treasure we desire from him. What is that? Freedom. Yeah. Before we make this journey, one or two questions. There's time. The craft has not arrived yet. These are uh, discs you wear around your neck. You press them to your forehead and you speak or hear through your mind. Hmm? Yes. Otherwise, you communicate as we do. Yes. Yes, I see. Quite remarkable. Then you use telepathy to blanket out the minds of the spaceship's crew. Hmm? Gently, Grandfather. Don't antagonize them. I merely want to know why you attack Maitland and the others. Ten years ago, five human beings landed on the sense sphere. Our planet welcomed them. Their minds were closed against us. Although we sensed they thought our planet was a rich one. Yes, rich in minerals, yes, quite. Go on. Then the five men quarreled. Two of the humans took off in a ship. It exploded a mile in the atmosphere. Hmm. What happened to the other three men? We imagine they hid themselves aboard, then fought the other two for control. Anyway, all were killed. Yes, but that still doesn't explain why you attacked Maitland and the others. Ever since that day of the explosion in the sky, our people have been dying in greater numbers every year. Yes, yeah, some kind of disease, I imagine, Chesterton. Maybe. Hmm. Well, a scarlet fever. And yet you're allowing us to visit your planet. Our people are dying, and the first elder says he senses great knowledge in you. Ha <laughs> ha, I thought so. Yes, 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 some kind of... Ha uh, <laughs> ha, I thought so. <laughs> Well, I suppose it's worth it, Doctor, if we get the lock of the TARDIS yes, back. Yes, providing we can produce our side of the bargain, that's the whole point of the issue. Well, my dear, reluctant as I am to leave you, I'm afraid we have no alternative. Oh, I shall be all right. I'm more worried about you. Oh, I should manage. Come along, my boy. Susan. But I have already made my decision. The deaths of our people will increase. You cannot prove that. The deaths began at the time of the last visit of human beings. Why should we welcome to our planet the same creatures who have been the means of our destruction? I am the ruler of this planet, am I not? Of course. Then what is the point of a ruler if he's not allowed to rule? I have decided to invite these humans here because I hope to use them to end the deaths of our own people. And how? I will explain. Sometimes one must use fire to fight fire. The first elder makes a wise decision. In one degree, I confess I am anxious. These creatures, these earth people, are loud and ugly things. Why could we not have met them in the desert or in the mountains? It is the failure of all beings that they judge through their own eyes. To them, we may appear to be ugly. What we must create between us is trust. That is why I have invited them to my palace. But are we sure these earth creatures are beings as you say? There are animals in the deserts and mountains, but we do not invite them into our palaces. Perhaps these earth creatures are animals too. Do not underestimate them. Do we possess a spaceship that can cross the barriers of the universe? And this small mechanism which my men brought to me looks like an ordinary lock, but in point of fact is an electronic miracle which reveals a mind of science far beyond ours. And this new arrival known as the Doctor. His mind was quick to realize our weakness in the dark and use it against us, but I would remind you, not unfairly, merely to protect the girl called Susan. You mentioned explaining to the people. You must not speak to them. You are forbidden to talk to the lower caste. Lower caste? Do you have such distinctions? Yes. How else can we tell what each man is best fitted to do? The elders think and rule, the warriors fight, the censorites work and play. You make it sound so very simple. And all are happy. But some are happier than others, eh? I do not understand. There is no disgrace in being in any of the castes. It is simply what one is best fitted for. All right, here we go. 
her near us now. It's all right, John. I'm here. The evil mind. He knows something. Yeah. Oh, it's just a jumble of words. No, Carol, no. Remember, his mind is open. He can tell the difference between good and evil people. He's trying to tell us something. I must go with him because he needs me. Very well. You will be given a room near him. Thank you. Come on, John. He is a good man. Not like... Not like who, John? He is good. Oh, man. Come on, John. Come on, John. We need an answer. Thank you for being so ah. understanding. It doesn't alter the fact that you're responsible for his condition. I think it's utterly disgraceful. Please, do not condemn before you know the facts. Facts? What facts, sir? Grandfather, please don't. Very well. Please sit at the places set for you. They are just taking their positions. Get ready to fire! Stop! Disconnect the disintegrator. Why? Because they are reasonable, they are civilized. They are Earth creatures and dangerous to us. I tell you, they are talking with the first elder and in a most friendly fashion. We need not fear them. Not whilst we have the disintegrator. It is beamed to their positions. They can be destroyed in a second. But they will not be. Dismantle the machine. I say that the trust we give to each other, we cannot show to these Earth creatures. And I order that the machine be dismantled. Give me the firing key. That was close. I am doubtful about you. You question orders. You question authority. Take care lest my doubts not become realities. You will bring then the crystal water and take the other away. Tell me, what exactly is the difference? In the yellow mountains which surround this city, I discovered a pure spring, very unusual in this planet. I believe the water holds special qualities, so I have flagons of it stored for the use of the elders. And this one? Is very well refined. We are very proud of our aqueduct. It lies beneath the city. I hope you won't be offended if I drink some. <laughs> very thirsty. Don't. As long as you taste of the crystal water, it is very fine. None of the elders drink anything else. Vintage water. Mm. <laughs> fruit is delicious. It tastes like peaches. Mm. No, sir. <clears throat> Let us talk of the future. I'm worried about Ian, and I'm worried about Susan. We are being bound hand and foot and given to these people from Earth. Our leaders are grown weak. I will follow you, the city administrator. Command me. I thank you for your loyalty. You shall have my confidence. I gladly accept. I do not trust these Earth creatures. Earth creatures. First and second elders are deceived. I question their leadership. If they do not change their attitude, they may have to give way to one of stronger thought. Did anyone tell them they were commercial? I guess they knew. For the moment, They're... I am glad of your loyalty. The time for action will not be far away. <coughs> My dear Chesterton, are you all right? Hmm? So, Ian's the only one who drank the water then. She had some of the food, but only he had that water. Your disease? Ian! that water. Grandfather, he's unconscious. There is no hope. Your friend is dying. Wow, you get to that real fast. There is no hope. <laughs> I love the whole 180 we go with this, where we start the end of the last episode is Susan's being taken, and then this one Right away, they, they fix that issue, and then by the end of this episode, now Ian is dying, and of course, there is no hope! It's so funny how they, there's always, it's too late, there's nothing that can be done. He's dying, that's how that works, obviously. Obviously. Anyway, it's a great show, obviously. It reminds me, I think if I was a little kid watching this, I would have been incredibly hooked on it but I'm, I'm still I'm still hooked just in a different way. I think as a little kid, I would be more upset. And this is like, I'm upset, but in a, an enjoyable way, you know, as an adult. But yeah, no, I'm really loving all of this stuff. I think it's really cool the way that these 
sensorites make you think about things. And I also love that we don't just have like evil alien bad guys. Like there's more to it than just that. They're deeper and they all kind of think things through like humans do and they all have different uh, difference of opinion. You would think with the mind, you know, how they can communicate directly through their brains and their devices, that they would be more on the same page. But there's a lot of like rifting going on here and a coup is constantly a Bruin. So I don't know how this is gonna end, but if they could fix John, hopefully they could fix Ian. But then again, the fact that their own leader said it's too late, nothing can be done about it, tells me that he is poisoned on a level that there's nothing right away when he drank that beverage. I was like, come on, Ian. Come on, man. You usually make so much sense. And this time you're just like, yeah, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna drink this. It was so obvious the minute he goes, don't drink that. Like the minute, the minute that their, their leader was like, yeah, don't drink that. I've got something better for you. I was like, yeah, don't drink that. That being said, I also think, well, they have different biology, so how do we know that even this stuff that's better for them is actually tested on humans? Like, there's no, it's like with anything in, in like food, like people would test things going back to not even that long ago, you know, when people lived in castles and whatnot. And I say not that long ago, but like historically speaking, in the grand scheme of things, that's not that long ago, as crazy as it seems. How do these aliens, how do they function? Like, cause they went through space, right? Like they clearly were in space so they don't need oxygen. That seems odd, but understandable. But then again, they do exist within oxygen because on their planet, the sense sphere, there's obviously oxygen there, or at least in the, in the chambers that they reside while they're uh, you know, communicating with the humans. I always think about these things and most people find it annoying. They're just like, Kyle, let the show be the show. So my apologies, but I can't help but wonder. It's just how I think. Either way, I'm enjoying the show. I hope Ian's gonna be okay. <laughs> He's kind of my favorite character right now. He kind of makes great choices. Him and Susan, I'd say, are probably my two favorites. I also like the doctor, don't get me wrong, and I also love Barbara. They both have, they all have their strengths, and they, they're all kind of smart in their own ways. But yeah, I'd say my two top faves are Ian and, and Susan. Just because Susan's so brave, and she's evolved so much from even just the first episode drastically. And Ian, he just most of the time does what I think you should do and he thinks the way I think you should do. Other than going after the sensor, sensorites, because initially I was like, they're scary, leave them alone, <laughs> no. But I love how they were like, let's lock the doors, lock them in. Unfortunately, it didn't work regardless, but either way, I don't want Ian to die. So let's not let that happen. And I hope when I move into the next episode, he's treated and we get a solution to this problem as quickly as we did to this, this episode with Susan being taken. So yeah, until next week when this dude does it again. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to this channel and our other channel, youtube.com slash fanning out. You can also support us by watching full length reactions and more at patreon.com slash fan theory TV. And we have a merch store where you can buy all kinds of goodies at teespring.com slash store slash fan theory TV.